This is your dinner, mate. Very sensitive to movement. Did you see that? My name's Jack Randall, and I'm a zoologist. Wow! And I'm showing you every animal on the planet. They're not seeing me as a threat. Spinning cobra! Hello. Absolutely gorgeous. Going about their business. Yes. Come on, let's go. Look at this place, this is the Namib Desert. These amazing sand dunes cut all the way along the Atlantic Ocean out here. The first thing that you'll notice is the mist. Look at all this fog. And that is literally the only way the animals that live in this environment are able to get any water. So this time of the morning, the animals are out trying to get that little bit of moisture that's in the air. So I'm looking for the habitat for the key species of the day, the Namakia chameleon. The Namakura is the only chameleon species on the planet that lives in the desert. I've come across this incredible animal once before and shared him on Instagram. So I'm back this time to show you the desert dragon properly on camera. See over there? That's the last bit of mist of the morning. I can even see it on the lens. Look at all that mist there. It's incredible. That is a moisture literally just from the air. Unbelievable. So it's that moisture that allows the animals to be able to survive in actually very, very dry conditions. There's no real rain. All of it is just coming from the Atlantic Ocean. This really could be a long morning. I've been here before looking for this particular chameleon and I know he's here, but if you just look along this landscape, you've got all these little humps and these bushes. And this particular bush here, it's called the dollar bush. And it's because it actually, that leaf kind of looks a bit like a coin. It's quite sparse, but still, it's quite amazing how the chameleon, when he's out on the top of this little bit of dune, he's very camouflaged. I'm gonna be looking every single one of these bushes for that target species. So this burrow here is a web-footed gecko's burrow. At night time, he'll just pop his head out, maybe on the, on the middle of these dollar bushes, and he'll be ambushing any prey, crickets, spiders that come along. But at this time of the morning, there's a different species of insect that is scuttling along the desert floor, and it's little beetles. So I'll show you the type of food that the chameleon will be eating. It's just an amazing little ecosystem that's being created from this mist and the vegetation that is pulling any water that's deep within an aquifer under the, under the ground. And then from there onwards, you end up with detritus. Detritus is break, broken down vegetation and there's animals that specifically eat that. And that's a particular beetle. And then that beetle then is food for the other animals that live around here, including the Namakia chameleon and other lizards. And then the lizards themselves are food for the snakes that live here. It really is quite a fascinating, quite simple ecosystem, but unbelievable how it actually works. So we can just keep looking around here and I'll show you the beetle, hopefully, and if we can track down the Namaco chameleon, they are epic. Let's keep going. Exactly what I said. This is just so cool. I mean, look at this. We've got one, two, three beetles. This one over here, that is a famous beetle that lives in these dunes. It's called the fog basking beetle. So this beetle, actually a lot of these different beetles, they have a really funny characteristic headstand. They stand on their heads and then they collect the dew and the mist that runs down their backs and that's how they get their moisture. Absolutely remarkable. And there's loads of them, they're everywhere. And that is the food for our target species, the Namakua chameleon. So he will see these beetles at this time of the morning and then flick his tongue out and then catch them, up to 50 a day. It's one of the keystone species out here. Without that particular species has worked out how to get as much moisture from this mist you wouldn't get the other species around here. A lot of nutrients in that. Put you back. things where you can 
it and spot one, or you could be here five days and really takes a long time. blurry eye syndrome just looking in these bushes. Oh, there's a track track bird. This is a really curious little character. Extremely, extremely friendly. They've got incredibly acute vision in preparation, knowing that this bird is quite friendly. Actually might feed off my hands. I've got some mealworms in my hand. You might be able to see a mealworm. How oh, cool! Completely wild track track bird taking some mealworms from my hand. Well, hopefully we'll get to show that kind of interaction with the desert chameleon. Is that? Yes! Come here! Whoa, look at this! That is the desert chameleon. Absolutely jet black, getting some of that sun, the sun's rays, be able to warm up and get that metabolism going. Oh, yes. If you come in here as well, you can see that dewlap of a chameleon is puffing out. He knows that a potential predator is right next to him. Just such a gorgeous animal. One of the biggest chameleons in the world, the only desert dwelling chameleon and the way he managed to survive out here, just like a lot of the other animals, is in the morning getting some of that mist, some of that dew, and be able to get the moisture from that. And then also from the beetles themselves. The beetles that are actually breaking down that vegetation, they're getting that moisture, and he's getting the moisture from those beetles themselves. Let me see if I can get you out, because you're just so precious. You might get a little bit grumpy. I've noticed with chameleons is that as long as you're going underneath them, they feel a lot more comfortable because as I said, there's predators for the chameleon and one of the key predators would actually be a bird, a hawk. So they're very, very aware of what's happening above them. So if I tower above a chameleon, he'll get very, very agitated and start puffing because he's very used to predators being above him. So look at this, he's getting very grumpy. He doesn't like this opens his mouth as well as a warning and it's very yellow inside and that yellow mouth if you're a predator you might think twice about gobbling him up so the desert chameleon has many different adaptations to survive out here not just that change of the coloration so right now is in that quite dark coloration really to absorb that heat as quickly as possible but as it gets super hot as the sun is starting to get warmer and warmer and warmer, it actually changes to be completely pale, which is reflecting that sun, because he doesn't want to get to above a critical temperature, and that's really dangerous for a chameleon. The other thing that they have, uh, like a lot of the other creatures, is if, if they're drinking a lot of the moisture from the fog, they actually have a nasal glands, which actually can secrete the salt that's in that water. So he's getting as much um, real water as possible. And the other thing that's different compared to normal other chameleons is that this one's actually remarkably quick on the ground. It's the fastest chameleon in the world. It can run, well, it, it, for a chameleon, it's, it's fast. It's for about three kilometers an hour, which is quite amazing. They do that in order to stay off the really hot sand, but also to chase down a beetle. He actually gets very calm as well once you, you know, get, get used to your presence. Because as I say, he's just, just chilling out on my hand there. But you can even see that now the coloration is beginning to change already in my hand. Believe it or not, and maybe if we wait here a bit longer, it will happen. That this chameleon will go completely pale. Another one of those fog basking beetles we saw earlier. This is your dinner mate. Let's see if we can demonstrate exactly how the chameleon catches prey with that long sticky tongue. They're very sensitive to movement, so if a beetle moves a little bit, it might actually spur on this chameleon. Wow! Did you see that? That was amazing. I love it. A chameleon feeding from my hand. See that tongue? Boom!
Yes, love it. The Namakua chameleon, just so well adapted for living in the desert. Absolutely remarkable. This is the first key species we managed to find out here in this desert. I'm gonna let this one go and say happy hunting to you. The Namakua chameleon, yes. Off you go. Happy hunting. Okay, this is actually a good demonstration. I just let him go on this bush. And look at this, this is a perfect example of how they change their color when it's getting hotter. And look how pale this chameleon has gone. So we've seen the chameleon go from black to that multicolored look. And now we've got much paler and still quite amazing colorations. But you can see the speed of a chameleon too. You would never see a chameleon go this speed. I mean, at any other species. The fastest chameleon species in the world. Macula Cavillian. Yes. Yeah.